Oh, okay, this this is something that I think the people from Latin will understand. We live on Latam and in the most of countries of Latam the things sometimes didn't work. So we are naturally problems with solvers. So when you start to work for a company from USA, that is something that you start to notice that you will resolve every problem that you have. You don't have a problem, you will look for the solution. And I think that is the biggest contribution that I made on Johnny because... Welcome to Hiring Nowadays, a podcast about what makes and breaks successful hiring. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Hiring Nowadays podcast. Before introducing to our wonderful guest, I want to present myself to the audience. My name is Christina. I'm a technical recruiter, and I've been working at the WANA for a couple of years now. Now that you know who your host is, I want to introduce to Juliana. She is an amazing backend developer from Argentina. Juliana, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and being here. Thank you so much, Chris, for having me here. And um, I really appreciate your invitation for this podcast. So, dear listeners, we have invited Juliana to talk about the cultural differences between U.S. and Latin companies. Juliana will tell us more about her experience. She currently works for a U.S. startup, an amazing startup. So, I'll give the word to Juliana so she can introduce herself properly and that we can get started with this amazing episode. <laughs> Thank you so much, Chris. Um... Hi all, I am Juliana, I live in Argentina and I have been working as a backend developer for the last almost five years and I have been working on Johnny, that is a startup of wellness and community for almost the two last years and I work with JavaScript as a backend developer with TypeScript, Node.js and using cloud services as, as IWS and GCP. Amazing. And uh, how do you like working at Yoni? What do you think are the most inter interesting things about working for a U.S. startup? What do you like? What do you oh, dislike? Well, well um, as I said, um, Yoni is a um, social app about wellness and community. And the things that I really like is this is a really small startup. This is a startup that is in a seed serious so we are not a lot of people working there and I really like that feelings the feeling to be a part of something that we are building to help people because when you don't have a really big team you feel that each line of code each decision that you take makes a difference into users so that is something that they really liked to work in Johnny. And I am thinking that maybe other things that I like is the product because the product is to help women to connect. And I, it's really interesting to work in a social media about that being a woman. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I really like that. Um, about maybe things that I dislike maybe is that I don't have PTO in the startup, but it's not a really big thing, I think, because I mean, when you, in my case, I really love my work. And when you are building something really interesting, when you have to implement new algorithms, where you have to learn about new technologies or about new services or solving different problems every day is not something about you are thinking about, okay, I, 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 I want vacations all the times, you know? So it's something that it could be really good to have, but it's not something that is really important in the day to day in my work. I see. And I'm thinking, yeah, as you just mentioned, the fact that you love the product and you love what you do is what keeps you going in your day to day job. So that's amazing to hear. Like, it's very important for us to be happy at the place we work at. That's nice. And yeah, as you mentioned, perhaps Johnny doesn't have PTO, but every startup is unique in their own way. And they have other things that may, um, you know, compensate for this part. Amazing. Perfect. So, Juliana, when working in this international company, U.S. company, what were some of the challenges you faced when transitioning from local environment to international environment? Well, um, the first 
challenge that I noticed when I start to work for a U.S. company is the bureaucracy because you start to be an independent worker. You know, you are not working anymore in a relation with your local company. So all that thing that you never think, I am talking about the situation in Argentina where you have to think about your plans to retire when you are mayor or your plans, your medical plans, that are things that you are not thinking when you work on a local company. But when you start to work for US companies, you have to think about that things. And you have to start to think something that I could say that I didn't like, but I studied for being an accountant for three years. So it's something that maybe like, but I don't like to do it for myself. But you have to start to think about your taxes as an independent worker. So I remember when I start, that is something that I really feel afraid because you have to take all that things on count every month, every month that you send an invoice, you have to think on all that things. So when I start, I remember that I speak with my friends that they work from US companies to understand how they handle it and the best solution it was hire an accountant to handle that situation. So maybe at the beginning it could be it's not a scary but it could be a um, headache something that makes me makes feel you a headache. But I think once a time that you solve that situation it's it's okay. And another challenge that I really notice, and you will, on my case, I notice every day is the language barrier because it's not the same. Maybe you could be really, really good in code. Maybe you could be a really, really good engineer, but when you have to explain your ideas, explain your solutions, when you have to talk with the clients, or the investors or the users, you have to understand what they need, what they want. So I think that is a I think that is really it's a really big challenge for me. And another thing about the that language barrier, it was do you do you see Mother Family or do you know about that scene of Gloria when she says something like you don't know how smart I am in Spanish. Well, it's, <laughs> yes. it's, it's the same feeling. And sometimes when your coworkers, I remember that all the times I feel something like, you don't know how funny I am in Spanish. Because when you have to talk in another language that is not your main language, you feel that you lose a lot of jokes. I love those little things about expressions that are really, really funny, but you couldn't share with them because they won't understand. So I think that with the time you will start to, to handle it, because if you have to work on a US company, you will be talking or speaking in English all the time. So it won't be a barrier all the time, but you have those, these feelings like I am really funny, but you never know because you don't speak Spanish. So. Oh my God, what you said is totally true. And I think that most of, of the people who are listening to us will relate to this because going back to, to your first answer relating to taxes, me as a recruiter, when I interview people, one of the things they ask me is, okay, so how will I handle the payment? Do I need to hire a accountant or something like that? That's the most common question we get as recruiters. So I think a lot of people looking for um, international opportunities can relate to that. And the last thing you just said, it made me laugh a lot because that's true. Like, it's not your, your mother language. Sometimes the tone or the words are not the same. And sometimes you want to say something, but then you think it's not going to so, sound so good in English. So I better say nothing. And yeah, it's funny. I totally understand that. Yes, and about the so. about the taxi situation, I understand you because it's different on each country of Latin America. You know, it's not the mm -hmm. same in Argentina, it's not the same in Brazil. So you never 
have the answer to to let them know how handle the situation. You have to the best advice that I would give you is uh, hire an accountant to handle that situations because it's different for each each country. Each country have a different law, so it's a world a world of things yeah, that you could make wrong maybe. So <laughs> <laughs> I think the better situation and you have to talk with your co-workers or maybe your friends that work for US companies just to know how to handle the situation. Yeah, so they can guide you. Totally understand. And and speaking of for us Latin American people, um, you know, in, in these challenges inside the US companies, did Yoni have any other um, Latam talent? Perhaps you would share some of the challenges with, with that person inside the company. Tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. Um, yes, Yoni have. When I start to work on Yoni, Yoni has another co-worker outside from America. And it was, a, it was an Argentinian, so that was really, really funny. But she works as a freelance. She is an illustrator. She designed the image and the art that, because the design of the app, it is very artistic. So she designed that art and she was a freelancer. She works some hours per week, but she was the, the first people from outside of Johnny and she was working there for the last five years, I think. And it was really, I really love her because I remember when I started to work, she sent me a message by Slack and she told me, hi, I'm Argentina too. Welcome. And oh my gosh, that <laughs> was really great. <laughs> because I knew that if I didn't understand something or if I need help with something, I just could send you a message, you know, like, please help me. I don't understand what means this and mm -hmm. some months after that I was working I just some months later that I start to work there uh they hired a new a new iOS developer and she was a girl too and she is a girl too and she is from Uruguay so again that was all speak in Spanish so that was really Really great because we share maybe the same kinds of humor. And when you want to make that jokes that I mentioned before, I, I remember that I sent message by Slack. Like, I, I need to share this joke, but they won't understand. So I want to share it with you. Please love with me. Yeah, you go, you go to your Latam girls. Amazing. That, that's amazing. <laughs> Perfect. And what about the rest of the, of the people in the company, the ones that not work from Latam? How did they welcome you? Remember that at the beginning they just have people from USA, but some months later they hired people from Canada. But I think it's the same, you know, with mm -hmm. with us. And luckily, uh, some of my coworkers they practice or they try to learn about Spanish. Some sometimes we could communicate. It's not that we we couldn't have um a fluent talk but you know I remember a situation where uh where I didn't understand a word they used the word shinra and I didn't understand what it is but it was I will say the, the word in Spanish it was genero but I remember that they have to explain me on Spanish and it was really really funny because I have two co-workers that both are from USA trying to explain me in Spanish Spanish, that word too. <laughs> I could understand. So oh, oh really that's nice. I'm guessing you're the effort. That's <laughs> nice. It sounds like like Yoni has like a really friendly culture environment for everyone, like from US people, Latin people. That's really great. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. So were there any cult main cultural challenges over there besides the of course the, the language barrier? Were there something else that was a challenge for you that it was very difficult to you to adapt? I think obviously we have uh, cultural differences, but the most 
I don't know. Let me think how to explain this because I don't want to mm -hmm. to sound rude. But I think the big difference is the way that we relation with our coworkers. Because I, before Yoni, I work from companies from Argentina, and we are really. I have friends. I have friends of those companies, people that I see, people that I send messages to know how are they. So I feel that a big cultural difference is the people from Latin are warmer mm -hmm. than the people from USA. They are not rude. They are not bad people. But the way that we relation with our coworkers are really different. I remember that when I was working for a company for a vintage in Argentina, we have meetings or all hands where we talk about the product and about the company. And then we have some minutes to talk about us. You know, what do you do on your weekends? Uh, what about your family? What about your, your pets or something like that? That is not something common on USA. That happened. We, we talk about each other in, in uni, but it's not something normal like happens in mm -hmm. Latin. So I think that is the big difference. But it's not it's not a barrier, you know, to just learn how their relations and you start to understand how to relation with them and you could create a good relations with your coworkers. It's, they are just different, but not but they are not different in a bad way. They are just different. Yes. I totally understand. Even in my experience, I can also relate to that. Well, me being a recruiter, you know, when, when speaking with different types of clients, there are those like, like Yoni, like Matt, he's, he's amazing. I, I loved talking to Matt. He was like super warm, super nice. And I thought to myself, well, this is unusual, as you mentioned. I mean, it's not bad. It's good. It's, you know, everyone has their own personality and every country has their own culture. But I remember it was like, Oh, that's really nice. I enjoyed talking to, to him. But I had other other clients. They were a little bit more like a structure, like professional, like, yes, please go ahead. Like, it's okay. It's nice, but it's different. It feels different. So I totally understand. Yeah. As Latin people, sometimes they can be more, more outgoing, like, hey, how are you? Like, Woo. but sometimes <laughs> yeah, with this, we have yes. to be more careful about our actions. <laughs> totally understand. And yes. now... Talking uh, about sorry. also challenges. Yes, go ahead. I, I just want to interrupt you, but I love the word that you use. Like they are, they sound more professional than us mm -hmm. when they talk because they are not yes. rude with us, but they sound like a professional. Like this is an entire meet of business, so we will keep this lined, you know? So I, love, I just want to mention that, that they sound more professional <laughs> than us, but they are not rude. Thank it's you. Different. No, not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I always think about it when I have the, the, those different type of clients. I'm like, I think this client is like that. So I'm going to keep it professional as well. <laughs> Sometimes I put like a, a smile, but that for me is like, oh my God, I have their, their trust to do that. So now speaking of different challenges, what about the technical part? So you as a backend developer, you have almost five years, five years of experience, but back then you had what, three years of experience more or less. So how has it been for you that journey on the technical side? Challenges, what have you learned? Please tell us a little bit more about that. Okay, in the technical side, I think that they are more exigent than us because mm -hmm. I feel that the interviews are different from the Latin companies than the US companies. Because um, for the, on my case, for the US inter, uh, interviews, I had to prepare myself. I remember, it's just not prepare. Because you have to prepare because you have to explain yes. all your experience <laughs> in English. So that is something that you have to practice to sound confident. But in the technical part, I remember that I had to to practice because I made um to be honest to to be hired by Johnny. I had to first 
practice and doing a lot of interview in other different companies. So it's really normal for them have uh, this this uh, code like interviews. And I really hate that kind of interviews because you have to resolve algorithms when someone that is watching you and you have to explain what are you thinking in English. So it's just, it's all an experience. But um, in my case, I, I start to love that kind of interview because it's a kind of interview that is really fast. And you have to, at the, at the beginning, you will be um, afraid of these interviews, but then you will start to love because it's not just a test. It's not just about the solution. It's about what, how you think the solution. So when you start to speak with your interviewer, you start to mm -hmm. feel more confident about what are you talking about with your code, but they are expecting on this kind of interview, you have to explain how you are thinking this solution and why you are thinking this solution. So you are not just have to, okay, I, I fix this. No, you have to explain how and why you are implementing this. For for the interview on Johnny, I remember that they sent me a part of their project, a, a little a snapshot of on the go mm -hmm. of of Johnny. And I remember that I have to implement a new endpoint for them. And I remember that I implement the solution and I send this link of with I send the email with the link of GitHub where I implement the solution. But I remember that I receive an email back that says, okay, why? Uh, it's your <laughs> your um your solution is, is really good, but why? How you get this solution? What do you think about this? Why you take this approach and not this other one? So in that case, they are more, they are more, as I said before, they are more exigent. They want to understand the process about how you think the solutions. It's not just about send something, no, it's okay or no, it's okay. No, they need to understand how you process because they need, in the most of the case, um, problem resolvers. So they want to know that you will understand the problem and you will resolve the problem. And if you couldn't resolve it, you will try to resolve it. So I think that they are different from the other companies in, in, in that type because your day to day will be resolved. Mm -hmm. And explaining why. Could... And I think that's a really good practice, even though it's not common, perhaps in most of the companies in our countries to do that. But I think it is a good practice because it challenges us, well, in this case, the developers, <laughs> it challenges the developers to to give more of themselves to say, okay, so I have to really explain why I did this. And yeah, I'm, I believe in myself. I believe in what I'm doing. So in, in other words, you also have to, to sell your thought process to them and convince them that you're doing this thing right. And in a certain way, it challenges you to do that. And I think it's great. I would be a little bit afraid, <laughs> of course. I, I would crack under pressure, I think. I would, but <laughs> yeah, I think that developers really that as a challenge for them. Have you cracked on the pressure perhaps in, in those scenarios where they asked why? Oh yes, um, all the times I totally be afraid. All the times I finish that interview and I start to shaking, you know, I all the time <laughs> I feel afraid. No, no matter how many years of experience I have, I always feel nervous before the interview and when the interview finish i start to shake it like oh my gosh i'm doing this what <laughs> but i remember something else about this this interview i remember that it, it wasn't just an email because i explained why and who but then he replied me okay but what happened on this case and we start to chat with emails about different situations so yeah. it wasn't just okay send the link send the explanation it was okay but what happened in this case what happened if this happens and it was a series of emails and it takes maybe one or two days and they they tell me okay oh. um we like that so we will continue <laughs> but i really love 
that kind it, it for for the beginning if i have to explain and when i explain to my friends they tell me that oh that sounds that's not really hard but it's not because you're talking on my case i was talking with the people that was going to be my manager and it's really important because you have to know the people that will manage you you know so this is the the person that will check your code that will have to explain the solutions if your solutions are wrong so i feel that i in in that communication i could know my managers and on the interviews as developer you don't have to forget forgot that you are choosing the company too you know so you have to de- detect the green flags and the red flags when you are in the interviews. And I remember that that chat for me was a, a really big, big green flag. You know, I was with a flag like, yes, I like this. I really <laughs> love this company. That's, a, that's amazing. And I, I'm enjoying so much you, you like hearing you talking about your experience, especially when I recruit you, so I'm proud of, of you <laughs> and the company you're working at right now. So I'm really happy for you. Amazing, amazing. So inside of all this topic of cultural differences, we've talked about language barrier, about cultural, perhaps more professional, more warm. But is there on any other big difference you could point out that would be like a huge difference between LATAM and U.S. companies? Yes, I... I noticed some difference, but this difference that I will notice is because I live in Argentina. I am not sure how we see in the other countries mm-hmm. of Latin America, but the big thing for me is that all of them use Apple. You know, in Argentina, it's not common to have an iPhone. It's less common to have a Mac to work. Yeah. But for me, so when I start to work on this place, they had to send me an iPhone because the application, the app is an app that is just published on App Store. So that's for me, it's a, it's a really big difference because I, I, in, I think that we have a team of 10 or 11 persons and no one of them use Android. All of them use iPhone and all of them, even the people that it, even the people that is not from IT, they use Mac Mm -hmm. to work. So I think that this is the really big difference because if, on my case, if you want to work with them, sometimes it's easier if you have a Mac, you know, it's not, they never tell you this. They never told you that, no, you have to have, have a Mac because they don't pay attention for those things. If you work with, with Linux or if you work with Windows, it's the same for them. But for me, it was, okay, all of you use Mac. That was something weird for me. But I think this is a a different, but it's not a bad thing. Um, I think I am... I am thinking about other difference that, okay, uh, the cultural difference about work. I think that is other difference that I noticed that it's not something that happens all the time, but they see works during the weekends as normal. You know, they never told you that you have to work on weekends. But I remember uh, that I use Slack and I use the Gmail of the company on my phone because if some things, I was the the backend developer, I was the only backend developer on the team. So if something goes bad on the server, I had to know because I had to fix it because I was the only person that could fix it. So I remember that I received emails and messages during the weekends where it says, hey, please check this code. Hey, um, could you see this? But they are just send the emails and the message because they are working on the weekends, but they know that you will check it 
on Mondays, you know, but for me, it was, where are you working the weekends? And I was <laughs> on my mom's house because she invited me to take a lunch. And I was, where are you working? This is, is Monday today? Wait, wait, what day is today? Because, <laughs> but for, for them, I think that is something that is normal. They are not. They never told you that you have to work on weekends, but they work on weekends. So that is something that I I noticed of them. Another difference that I mentioned is that they are more exigent in technical aspects mm -hmm. that us. I mentioned all the situation before. And other things that I noticed mm -hmm. that is different from... Sorry, I have another... <laughs> A lot of difference, but other difference is I Please think that <laughs> I think that they are more used to working asynchronously, you know. But mm -hmm. this is uh, my own opinion because I never asked. But I think that's happened because in the case of them, they have different um, time zones on the same countries, you know that. Uh, USA, I think, have three or four different time zones. In Argentina, we just have one. So they they are not expecting that you overlap your entire, entire day to work. Um, I remember that my managers and the iOS developers um, work from, they are from Los Angeles. So we have a difference of four hours or five hours depends if it was summer or winter. And I remember that when I work with them, they just want that overlap four hours. If I overlap four hours with them, we are okay. I didn't have to overlap all my days, my eight hours. So I think that they are, but I think that is because if they, if you have a, a co-worker from Los Angeles, another co-worker from New York that they have, I think three hours of difference, this is this is something normal for them, and this is not something normal from people from Argentina. In my case, that we have we don't have different time zones, so I think that is something that 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 is one of the things that I really like to work from U.S. companies that you could work asynchronously and they understand how work asynchronously. So that is a a really really advantage for me for to work on a US company. And it says a lot of a lot of the of the culture because it's like I know you're in a different time zone, that's okay. But at the end of the day, like everyone they want results. So if you meet meet the goal, if everything's okay, then perfect. They trust you. You give them no reason to not trust you. And, and that's a really big thing because it's up to us to dedicate full time and be like expectations. So that says a lot about them on trusting us or the remote team about knowing that we're gonna work fully concentrated with them for them. So that's amazing. That's an amazing thing about them. Perfect. So here goes like really interesting question. Why do you like to work for international companies? I know we've mentioned a lot of perks, a lot of good things, a lot of different things, but I'm thinking that perhaps your your mind is the same as is the same as other engineers or developers, and they would like to know, and I would like to know, why do you like to work for international companies? I think uh, the most obvious is the salary. But if you are looking for a job on America, you know that. So I think that is not the main reason. I mean, you know that if you want to increase your salary, you have to be open to U.S. companies. But I think uh, on my case, the the reason for uh, because I want to the reason why because I want to work in USA is the reason that I mentioned before, you have a freedom to work and you could have a good, a good work-life balance, you know, because you don't have to overlap all your day to work with them. So 
on my case, um, love going to swim and I made Pilates. So I could handle my day because of the activities that I really love. You know, if I want to start one hour later, I could start one hour later because they don't have a problem with the, the time as some companies on LATAM have. You know, you have a freedom. If you want to schedule an appointment, you could go to the doctor and then come back and continue working because they really, they really appreciate the results. So if you have your work done, you could handle your day to work as you want. And I think that's, this is the better advantage that have work from U.S. companies. On my case, I don't have um, children, but I think that is a, a problem for a lot of people that they need to go to the school and, or they need to, they need to go to appointment. And they couldn't in Latin companies because now you have to be here from this time to this time. And sometimes it's a, it's a problem, but with you, with the companies, from yes, as we say, they just need to overlap. In 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 some companies, you should have to overlap the hours where they have meetings. You know, you have to join this meeting, but the rest of your day handle as you want. But you have to have your work done and you have to join this meeting. So that freedom, I think that is one of the best things. And other things is that you could work not in all the companies, but in the most of the companies, you could work um, wherever you want. I remember that I moved to, I live in Cordoba, in Argentina, but I remember that if I want to move one month to Uruguay to work, I could work. You know, they don't have a problem. Where are you working? You could move whatever you want as long as you have your work done. And I think that I really love that to work remotely for US companies. I, it's, I think it's something good to, to your work-life balance and it's something that makes love your work. And I think that is important because you have to work a lot of years on your life. So you have to enjoy your day to day. Mm -hmm. And I think- I totally agree with you. Great. On that side, I also love working remotely. And there's a funny thing that happened to me. Well, it's, it, it has happened to me a couple of times, but the other day, my husband, he, he works for a local company here in my country. And he, I was doing something, I can't recall what, what, what it was, but it was, I don't know, Monday 4 p.m., for example. I needed to do like something quick. It wasn't related to job. And he sent me a message, like, a message like, do you really work? <laughs> Why? What, what are you doing at that time of Monday? You think it's something else that is not related to your work? I was like, yeah, I do work. <laughs> I keep results. <laughs> <laughs> My work is different. <laughs> like, do you really work? Are you really working? And I was like, yeah, I am. And, and that's something that people who don't work or doesn't work in the in this remote world or with international companies completely understand. They are like, I don't know, how can you do that? How could you work from home? Like, that's weird. And I was like, it's amazing. Once you try this remote world, you don't want to go back to, to the office. No. I, I don't want to go back to the office. I, I love my job. <laughs> that's amazing. They have so many perks and that's one of the advantage, advantages. I completely agree with you. Yes. Um, so, yes. so, my dear Juliana, what do you think has been your biggest contribution when joining an international team? Um, okay, this, this is something that I, I think the people from Latin will understand. We live on Latin and in the most of countries of Latin, the things sometimes didn't work. So we are naturally problems with solvers. So when you start <laughs> to work for a company from USA, that is something that you start to notice that you will resolve every problem that you have. You don't have a problem, you will look for the solution. And I think that is the biggest contribution that I made on Johnny because 
This is something that I talk with my manager. He don't have to be afraid about the different problems that Johnny had. He don't have to think about think. He don't have to be, I think, aware about the the needs that Johnny have because I will solution all the things that they ask. You know, I remember when I start to work, I start to work as a backend developer, but in some time they need to start some new features in the internet that is in React. I remember that they started to work on React and it wasn't a problem for me. He he told me something like, oh, we need to add these new things on React, but no one's new React. And I know React, I could learn about React if you need it. So I started to work on React and then he told me like, you you don't, you don't have a problem. You just tell me I, I will do it. And yes, I I will do it. I will take care of this feature. And I will learn how to resolve it and I will resolve it. Um, so I think that is a good advantage that the Latin people have because it. I have another example. I remember that we had to send emails and we have, we don't have to want to spend a lot of money on that service. So I remember that I told you, okay, uh, let me make a research and I will give you some solutions and then as a manager you will take the best solution that you think and i remember that i started to looking for different services how much are the costs of these services and i remember that i prepared a documentation and i sent him uh we use notion in the on journey so i remember that i prepare a page with all the service that i research and all the advantage and disadvantage and I sent him so those are all the solutions that I think that I found choose whatever you want that I will implement it so I think that I think it's a big contribution because he could he could take care about his work that is be a manager because I will handle all the situations and all the problems that happens on the server side. So I will do my work, I will do my best. So you don't have to take, I won't be a problem for you and I will offer solution for you for all the problems that you will have. I think that is my biggest contribution is a be a solid problem to help him mm -hmm. and to avoid the I don't know how to say when you work a lot and you don't have a rest. That is something with you have something like that. Yes, it's something like ah, okay, to avoid a burnout. That was I will mm -hmm. help you a lot to help you and avoid a burnout because you have a lot of things on your head. So give me some of your work, I will help you, and we will work together building on. So we will be okay. That. I think that is my biggest contribution. Amazing. And from what I'm hearing, you're not only um, trying to be a problem solver, but you also do more than you have to do. You put that, you do that extra mile, which is amazing. And those skills are not easily found at all. So that's amazing, Jirana. That's a skill I'm pretty sure they're enjoying it and admire a lot because that's amazing for companies. Who would like someone who takes care of things and give that extra mile? Thank you. And I think that happened when you love the product you, that you are building and when you love your coworkers. You know, if your coworkers are great and mm -hmm. you love the product that you're building, you will do the extra mile because you want to. 100% mm -hmm. true, total. So my dear Juliana, we are almost at the end of our podcast. So I have one last question for you. If you could give one piece of advice to the people who are on the lookout for international opportunities, what would it be? I think I have one big piece of advice and then two other ones that are important. But the biggest, I think, is learn English practice English. It sounds like, because um, something that I noticed working from the USA is and the technical part, you will always 
learn because you have documentation and you have documentation in English or Spanish. And if you don't have documentation in Spanish, you could copy and paste in the translator and you will understand, you know? So the technical part is easy to understand, but you have to learn how to speak in English and how to understand in English because to build a product, the most important part are the users and you have to understand the users and you have to understand your coworkers when they talk because you have to understand the product and how to build it. So the communication is the most important part in in your world. So I think that is the thing that you have to to learn and practice. You could be a really good developer, but if you have to work in your day to day and you don't understand the specifications, you don't understand what the investors want and what the users want, you couldn't work, even if you are really good solving algorithms, you know? Because um I think I think that is the I think that is the the thing that makes the difference. Because on my case when I didn't understand something about the product or about the code, I remember that my manager or the CEO explain me but they explain me in English so I if I don't understand English I never understand what they are saying then if I want to implement a solution I could look for a solution I could read documentation but the first talk with my manager and with the CEO it's really important to understand what they want so I think that if you want to to join company from USA you have to practice your English and you understand your English. And you don't have to be fluent to start to make interviews. You have to understand and you have to be able to communicate. Then you will practice and you will speak better because you will be exposed to the language. But I think that is the most important part. If you say, I want to start to, I want to work for a US company. Okay, I have to learn English. That is the most important part. And I have, others to advise. I am not sure if we mentioned a lot of this, but Chris was my interviewer and she helped me to join Johnny. So I think the second advice is found someone that wants that you joins the company. That is really important because I remember that for me, the, the process of interviews, it was really hard because I never worked before from a company from USA. And Chris really makes the difference for me because when I have to make an interview, she told me, okay, this first interview, you will talk with the manager. The manager is, this is his name. And maybe you will talk about this. So I feel confident because I could prepare the interview, you know? So I think that is the best piece of advice. Please found people that improve your develop. I think that is really important and that makes the difference. And the third piece of advice is something that I told me to myself all the time is you will be afraid. You, in the most of case, you will be afraid to make the interviews and that is totally okay. If you are afraid, make it with fear. I think that is one of the best things that I say me to me when I am shaking in an interview. Like, okay, we are afraid, but we are still doing this. So do it. Make it with fair. Oh, Juliana. Oh, it, I'm so happy to hear you that to say that. And I'm pretty sure our listeners will value a lot of your advices. Thank you so much for saying uh sharing your knowledge, your experience to our dear listeners. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for the feedback you gave uh, about us, about Awana. So, dear Jelena, thank you again for taking the time to talk to us. And thank you, amazing listeners, for exploring Latam talent seeking opportunities with in the U.S. with Awana. So, bye for now, and I'm pretty sure your great opportunity awaits. Thank you, Juliana, and I hope to talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in and spending a part of your day with us. We appreciate it. If you enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe 
rate, and leave us a review. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. Have questions? Head over to awana.io and ask away.